started reading my Bible last night. Got some questions for you. That should help me out. It's been bothering me as I went through it all in one night, so I'm kind of dazed with a lot of questions here. <laughs> yeah, I read the whole one. Yeah. <laughs> no. Jeff Adams used to read it while pastoring 1,500 people. Jeff Adams, as the pastor of Kansas City Baptist Center, he would read it through in 30 days. Straight up. And spoke like five or six languages. And was like a secondary black belt. Witnessed to everybody. Went... Just a great, just a great dude, man. Just a great dude. So, of whom was it said in your King James Bible, it would be better if that man had never been born? That's quite a saying from the God of the universe who is the author of life and who knows everybody from beginning to end. I mean, there was one person in your King James Bible that the Lord of glory said, it'd be better if this guy wasn't even born. Now, Justin, I saw your hand go up, so what do you got for me? Judas. Judas Iscariot, to be correct. That, that's right, because in John 14, 22, it says, Judas, not Iscariot. I mean, God can use the same name twice in the same Bible, you know. It's where a lot of the problems would be eliminated if, you know, well, I, I don't get that. Why is one king called that over there and then something over here? Di- How many names have you been called in your life? <laughs> to, uh, where are you at, Justin, for the answer? You are correct. That is the right answer. Judas Iscariot is the man of whom the Lord Jesus Christ said, yeah, it'd be better if this guy was never born. You got, you got the reference there, Brother Justin? Matthew to John. One more time, sir. <laughs> Don't say in the Bible. That's when pulpits get, start and wh- get whipped around around here. How about Matthew 26? And Brother Justin, if you get there, can you read verse 24? The Son of Man goeth as, as it is written of him, the woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. I'll give you the companion to this. Go over to Mark 14, please. Mark 14. If you're a Bible marker, it'd be a good, good spot to mark it down for you, just to have, a, have the, the cross reference. Uh, Brother Justin, can you get 1421 of Mark? The Son of Man goeth. And the Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had not never been born. So you got Matt 26, 24, and you got Mark, MK, 14, 21. Go to Job 3 very quickly. Give you a, give you a little extra, a little sriracha on top of that. Lord willing here. Go to Job 3. Good word for that man if he never been born. What a thing to say, man. <laughs> man. When God says that about you, nah, not a good day, man. Not, not a good day. We'll just take a couple of these verses right here. It's pretty, I think this is pretty neat here. Job is a picture of the Jew in the last half of the tribulation period, 42 chapters, 42 months. Uh, that's three and a half years, time, times, half a time, 1,203 score days. Job is, has the devil let loose on him at God's behest. And at the end, Job gets it all taken care of by the Lord, uh, but you're going to see something neat that will go along with, with Judas Iscariot. And, of course, it's found in the book of Job. Why wouldn't it be when the Antichrist, son of perdition, who Judas is that devil in the pit, comes back up and has, takes a body. Look how this, uh, this works out. Deb, can you get a Job 3 just for, man. Can you go, can you go 1 through 12? I know. This, <laughs> I just can't do it, man. Mm-hmm. Let that day be darkness, let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stay in it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Lo, let that night be solitary. Yeah. Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that curse the day. Are ready to raise up in the morning. Let the stars in the twilight bear up in dark. Let it look for light and have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day. Man. Because it shut not up the doors from my mother's womb, nor 
Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Why not the breath that I should suck? <laughs> Why well, talk about it? I'm not being smart or being filthy at all. What a case for somebody that said, I want to, he's basically saying, I want to be aborted. Why did I even come out? What a horrible thing. I mean, you go through all those funerals and, and, and the wife situation, your crops and all that, and I, 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 don't, I don't rag all over Joe over that situation. That's rough, man. But he says, you know what? I wish to God I wasn't even born. Why did it even come forth? Why, this, why, why am I even breathing air? Why, why didn't the knees prevent me? You know, in other words, a woman, why, why am I even alive? There's a lot in that passage. Did you see the term man-child in there? That should take it to Revelation 12, right? Okay, maybe not. Maybe we're somewhere else right now. Maybe we're at the gas station getting our tank filled up, but let's try and pull it in for a few minutes. You got man-child in there, and then he also says uh, days and months don't even get associated. They don't even get counted. That is a great verse for why God has generations excluded from Matthew's genealogy, right? Sometimes he counts them, sometimes he doesn't count them. That's God's per. He can do that. Some kings he puts in, some he takes out. He puts Ruth in there. I mean, I mean why would he do that stuff? Because that's the way he counts. Pretty neat. That's a, that's, that's a great verse in Job 3. I'll, I'll show you one more. Go, we're not going to read it, but I'll, just, I'll show it to you. Go to Psalm 109. This is a great, another great passage in Psalm 109 regarding the, uh, the Antichrist. Well, we'll read a couple of verses now that we're into it. Why not? What was that? You knew it was going to happen. Megan. Uh, Psalm 109, Brother Bert. That's, that's all right, man. Megan probably interrupted you with her insolence. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, man. Psalm 109, just for, for the sake of it. The Bible says this. Uh, we, we can't read it all. Can you read 6 through 14, Brother Bert? I know it sounds like we're reading it all, but we're really not. Oh uh, yeah, man. Well, yeah. Well, it's good to know where you're reading, man. Deb, Deb, hold them up, please. I'm suggesting. <laughs> Bert, wow. See, you're here. You're here. It's Vernon, man. <laughs> Deb, are all the papers in order? Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah, I man. Psalm 109, six through fourteen, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're not Chuck E. Cheese, but we're in church. Here we go. <laughs> uh, set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let him mm -hmm. be his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. <laughs> let his children be continually vagabond <laughs> today. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate man. Houses. Remember this in the day, our daily bread. Yeah, this, this isn't your devotion for the day to have a... Let's have a cup of coffee and sit down with Charles Schuler from the Church of Stupidity. Let the extortioner catch all that he has, and let the stranger spoil his labor. <laughs> let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any favor to his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Man. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not <laughs> What honestly? What a phenomenal prayer list re request! Why don't we put that on the prayer list? Now, let let me just throw this out to you, Bible students, which we all should be Bible students. Isn't there a passage over in Second Thessalonians two that says, "He that now"? How many times does it say "let" in there about Judas Iscariot? You take him out of the way, and Satan fills that boy, and there he is. The let, he who now led the let is not the Holy Ghost, and it's not the church. You see how many times the let is in there? I mean, it's, I mean, it's all through those 15 or so verses they are talking about, literally, Judas Iscariot. <laughs> and it's all let, let, let. That's God giving you a clue that, yeah, I'm going to take that man of sin, and then the son of perdition, there he is, man. When the devil gets kicked down to the earth in Revelation 12 and fills his son, he resurrects him from the dead, and it is hell on wheels, man, for those last three and a half years. Because he doth now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's pretty cool how that word let is in there. Just a little, little three letters, man. Pretty cool. Now, the Bible says this. Uh, no, my, 
No, uh, here we go. Never, Bert, don't say anymore. Dude, so let's, let's, well, let's move on, man, because I, I like this stuff, man. It keeps me more interested in the Word of God than, than, I, than I normally am. How did Jezebel specifically die? That's question number two. Okay, is that a finger and then a down? or Okay, how did Jezebel specifically die? Yep. That's, that's how she died, and then, then, then she, yeah, she's Alpo, man. Do you know where that is, Jennifer? You are correct. That's the right answer. Do you know where that is? Rough, rough area? What's, uh, Jeze- now think about it for a minute, Jezebel. Jezebel was mentioned in Revelation when we preached about Thyatira, 2 Kings 9. Okay? She's primarily through 1 Kings. We read about that with Ahab. He married Jezebel, but her life goes on after Ahab dies. Go to 2 Kings chapter number 9. And if you could get, um, get 30 to 35, Jennifer, please. 2 Kings 9, 30 to 35. This is a good nightmare. We're talking about Judas having no kids and be cursed, and you know, as the mother of his nick, as mothers of the nick would not be blotted out. And let's talk about Jezebel. It's just a good night. It's a good night, man. It's joy, joy and peace. And when Jacob heard about Jezebel, Jezebel heard of it, and she came to her face and tired her, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a good way to die, man. Uh, guys, you busy right now? Chuck that, chuck that woman down, would you? <laughs> I'm not laughing, but didn't God tell everybody what was going to happen to that woman? And he said the same about Ahab, too. What did they do with Ahab? What did the dogs do when his chariot was getting cleaned out? Licked his blood. Yeah. That tells me that God, when he says something, he means it. There was a bumper sticker years ago that said, uh, they used to say, God said it, I believe it. That settles it. Your believing in it has nothing to do with whether or not it's settled, folks. God said it, it's happening. God doesn't care whether you believe in it or not. He said it, it's going to happen. Jezebel, that's the way you're going out. Ahab, that's the way you're going out. Yeah, what a, what a way to die. Those eunuchs are always popping up, man. ebed Melech, right? He helped Jeremiah. Got him out of the pit. Got the two or three eunuchs right here. Got an Ethiopian eunuch that gets saved in Acts chapter number 8. That's pretty wild stuff, man. I think, anyway. All right. What's the total number of days? This is a bonus question because I was feeling very bonus oriented today. What's the total number of days that Ezekiel lied on his side? We just, actually, we just went through this. What's the total number of days? That he, remember, he did some on his left, he did some on his right. So what's the total? All right, Jonathan, get fired up. Now, there's a number that repeats itself, this same number, over in the book of Galatians. I'm thinking about going through that at some point in time in here. Uh, no, it's not just 390. It's 390. That's, one, you got, that's one of them. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's one of them. Right. 13 times 30 and 40, the time of trial and testing. So that is, that is 100% correct. Jonathan good on the 40, and then dragged it out. Go to Ezekiel chapter number 4. I like it. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 4. Um, what happened? Ezekiel chapter number uh, 4, if you could, 4 through 8. Ezekiel 4, 4 through 8. I mean, we're not going to talk about him playing Stratego and setting up a camp and all that with everything. It is pretty cool, though. 4, 4 through 8, Brother Jonathan. Lie thou upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it. Thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days, 390 days. Mm-hmm. 
So shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished that, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Therefore thou shalt, let, shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay hands upon thee, lay bands upon mm -hmm. thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another till thou hast entered the <laughs> I'm not going to let you up. Now, I don't know if this is the exact match to it, but the 430 years is a Galatians 3, 17 about the, uh, and, this I, and this I say that the covenant that was conform, confirmed before of God in Christ the law, which is 430 years cannot, uh, after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise. Well, they're, they're breaking the law of God everywhere. So God says, you know what? Left side, 390 days. Judah, right side, 40 days. They're, you're going to bear their iniquity because that's all, they're just abominable. And they're carrying through their abominations in front of me. 430, man, four, imagine lying for a year, let's see, 360, wow. Yeah, man, it's like four, 15, 13 months, four, it's like 14 months, man, not getting out of bed. And when you're, oh, we, we'll roll you over at 390 first day, 391 days, we'll flip you out. You read this stuff, you're like, that's crazy, man. And yet God did it to him. All right, I need some verses on envy. Or envious, please. We'll do a few of these and we'll jump into it where we left off last week on the mystery. Verses on envy or envious, if you could, please. Brother Justin, fire away. Proverbs 24, 1. Yep. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For the heart saith destruction. Yeah, that's why you don't want it. Yeah. That's a real good one. Amen. Be not thou envious against evil men. Had a verse like that on oh, a couple Sundays ago about great expectations. There's another one that's really close to where you are. I have it, Haley, but for a cash award. It, I, I know. You and I, Justin, are on the same page. Brother Burke, go ahead, fire away. That's, you know, that's a, that's a key one right there. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Speaking of Pilate, it says, For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him to end. Yeah, man. That's the motivating sin behind that whole thing. Whew. Haley's looking for, I mean, literally, where just, well, I'm sorry? <laughs> You're freaking out, aren't you? There's rottenness in his bones, Haley. Anybody else? Yes, no, couple? Use your concordance in the back. Megan left or else we'd steal her concordance, man. <laughs> well, well, Mo, what are you doing? Don't be like you open book test like your husband tonight, seriously. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a road. That one about Pilate's huge, man. That that's huge. Didn't they also sell an Old Testament patriarch that we studied for about a year and a half? But you're not going to find it in Genesis, Kenny. That's my hint. It's the retelling of the it's the retelling of the selling of Joseph, but it's in the New Testament. When Stephen, I mean, there's a great one right across the page from where Justin was. Let not thine heart. Go ahead, Deb. Psalm 37, 1. Mm -hmm. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Thank you. Amen. That's your 24 1 of Proverbs cross reference. Amen. It's a real good one. It's a real good one. We got the Cogshaws off the board. We got to get some other folks here. And we got Justin Plank off the board. Go ahead. Verses on envy or envious. If you need to, hey. Make, see, make, she's got the code, man. She got the, see, this is how you get the Iron Mike Tyson Nintendo. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, and look up Envy. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah. Did you find the one in Acts, buddy? I know you did. I know you did. That's, uh, that, that's your cross-reference for Jesus Christ in, in Mark 15. 
The sands of time are sinking. This isn't that hard of a question. You got? James 3. Oh. There you go. See? Mo, I knew you, I knew you had it. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's a real good one. Mo is off the board. It's a, it's a big crowd tonight. Jonathan's just looking. He's thinking right now. He's trying to. He's going through the whirlpool of verses. Okay, I have Megan. I have a hand. I see a hand. This is a hand. Yeah. Go ahead. Fire away. <laughs> That's, well, that you know what that that's gonna work. Go ahead. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, mm-hmm. they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Amen. Yep. Haley's looking for envy, the rottenness of the bones. I've got <laughs> Karen Brown. At work of the flesh, man. Come on now. Amen. Who would have thought envyings would be in the work of the flesh that's just horribly, it's in with murder and everything, idolatry, man. <laughs> Kenny was at hand. That was an itch, wasn't it? You're kind of. <laughs> oh, that's so easy to say. Oh, come on, man. Can, to get another one? No, no I, I, I like, <laughs> just like her mother, Justin, I told you, man, she's just, she's, she's exactly like her mom, and I told her not to be when she came out of the womb, but there she is, man, I told her to be, be nice and loving like her, her father, her father, the devil, no, <laughs> Yes, no, anybody else? I know you, I know we got folks with a couple. Brother Bert's got the one I really, that's the one I, I Brother Bert, and then we'll go Justin. Go ahead. Acts 7 and 9. That's it, man. And the patriarchs moved with them to mm-hmm. Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him and delivered him out of all the afflictions. Huge, man. Favor in sight, in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Moved with envy, sold Joseph. That's that's the, that's fifteen ten. So everybody's saying, "All right, all right, la, Justin, last one, and we'll give the we'll give the gavel, man. Once, twice, sold. Go ahead, brother Justin. Proverbs twenty seven four. Wrath is cruel, and anger is outrageous. Right. But who's you know what the answer to that is? Jesus Christ stood before envy. He stood right in front of envy. That's what they were. That's why they've delivered him up, and he stood right there. All right, go to Proverbs twenty-three. You're going to freak out when you see this. Proverbs twenty-three. We just we just went over this uh, a couple Sundays ago. Haley twenty-three seventeen and eighteen. Okay, I know it's not the one you wanted. I'm just you know don't don't freak out on me. Don't knife me in the parking lot or anything. Go ahead. There you go. All right. Where can you tell me where it's at? I cannot. <laughs> wow, I guess we're gonna have to ask verses on jealousy as well and envy. Wow. Ding ding ding, the Holy Ghost conviction show. The fruit of her loins right there. Haley, I just disowned you like the Lord disowned Israel. Sorry, man, you're out, man. But envy the rottenness of the bones. Do you know where it is? That's called out of the pit of hell satanic device you just pulled out. I accept, bo- I accept books. I don't accept electricity. No. Go ahead. <laughs> I can't believe a first-time visitor would do that. The, uh, <laughs> she didn't even hear that. Jen's over there. Hey, hey, hey. 
it's, yeah. <laughs> like I just said, for a first time visitor, you pull out your phone, that's unacceptable. <laughs> All right, Romans chapter, Ro Romans 3, Romans 3, come on, let's, let's pull it together, man. Romans 3, if you could, Romans 3. Let's look at some New Testament pulls of the, this mystery, as we saw, mystery of fellow heirs in the same body. God, through the Holy Ghost, said in Ephesians that the apostles and prophets, they, they had some gist of it. The apostles, obviously, those are New Testament folks, but it was not revealed to them like it was revealed to the apostle Paul. But you're going to also see through the New Testament verses we're going to look at that God can put this mystery in the Old Testament. There's an, and I'm, I'm probably going to get this wrong, so forgive me. I'm, not going to, I'm probably not going to quote it right. But one of the things the hyper-dispensationalists like to say is, uh, and Brother Berg, you're going to need to help me on this because of the hyperactivity you got going on with the, this situation, but it's uh, a, mis a mystery, if it's, the, the church is the subject of revelation, not, I'm trying to remember it because I can see it right now in the book. In other words, that what they're saying is, is that no, it, it, it was not there until it was revealed. Well, it is there, and now it gets revealed specifically to the Apostle Paul, but now that it's been revealed, you can see the pulls that God has in the Old Testament. Uh, Brother Paul's not here tonight, but we were talking last night when we went to, uh, to Woodlake. He, he was reading a verse in either Obadiah, I think it was, about where the, Gentile, the heathen shall be called by my name. Well, when is that doctrinally? That'll be the millennial kingdom. But what does it say in Hebrew, uh, uh, excuse me, Romans 3? Is he not the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, man, there's something about that transition through the book of Acts where God says, yeah, let me start pulling those things in. And that's what I want to look at tonight is that this is not universal salvation. The salvation is all the same. You, already, you guys already know. I don't have to explain myself to you. You know, you know the way I believe in what the Word of God says. But watch how God pulls these Old Testament things through to the New Testament. Romans chapter 3. Where did we uh, leave off? Brother Kenny, I haven't heard from you in a little while. Romans 3. Romans 3, 21 to 31, if you could, please. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law of the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, mm -hmm. for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time His righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where is boasting then? It is, it is ex excluded. Yep. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. It is he the... Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the Gentiles? Yes, of the mm -hmm. Gentiles also. Seeing it, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. That is a huge... Now, early in the passage, uh, he says there's none righteous, no, not one. What is the Scripture concluded earlier in the chapter, and also in Galatians, that both who are under, under, under sin? Right. Jew, yeah, it doesn't matter. But I mean, when you're looking at the commission in Matthew 10, you're looking to how the church is established and all those things, it is without a question a Jewish flavor and the Gentiles are on the outside looking in. But now that the mystery is full-blown given to our apostle and you've seen how it transitioned through the book of Acts and how the Jews have basically said, yeah, we're, we're, we're just not down with this. And Apostle Paul says, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Oh, and you know what? They will hear it. So after the book of Acts, you now have Romans to Philemon. 
If you skipped from Acts 7 to Hebrews, you wouldn't have any problem whatsoever. But God puts that little parenthesis in time, those Gentile epistles, man, and says, you know what? Is he not the God of the Gentiles? Yeah, he's the God of the Gentiles also. How? Through Jesus Christ. Because now there's no Jew in Christ, there's no Gentile in Christ. They're fellow heirs of the same body. Well, how can he make that pull? What do the Gentiles know about Jesus Christ and God in the Bible and in the Old Testament? Flood, mountain, uh, and not a whole lot unless a few proselytized over. But that still didn't make them of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by seed or by family. What a great pull that is in the book of Romans. Go with me to Romans 10. Romans 10. This is pretty neat. Romans 10. Mo, I need you to get Romans 10, please. And it's a little bit, so get, get some oxygen. Don't pass out if you could. Let's do this. Let's go six. Actually, you know what? Because I'm feeling kind of generous tonight. Can you go 6 through 13? And then, Megan, you go 14 to 21, please. But the righteousness, excuse me, which is the fruit of faith, speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from the cross. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. So he smiles, then he winks at you. Go ahead. Yeah. Amen. I just see him on that cross. All day long I've stretched forth my hands. But who is that really to right there? What's the first verse of Romans 10 say? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for... And then look who he weaves into it. And then at the end he says, all day long I've stretched forth my hands into a disobedient gain, saying people, singular. Now stay, stay, stay with me. Go to Isaiah chapter number 28. Deb, if you can get Isaiah 28. I caught you in between Kleenex, so I don't know if you're ready to go. Isaiah 28, if you can get Isaiah 28, 16 and 17. <clears throat> yes, yep. Twenty-eight sixteen is what the Lord said in ten eleven of Romans. What does Isaiah twenty-eight sixteen got to do with how a Gentile gets saved or how somebody gets saved today? But because the mystery is now available to Jew and Gentile, God can pull those verses and still make them applicable out in the future as well as present day. How did you get saved? 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thy heart, God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confesses man in salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What comes before that is the repentance. Now, repentance is not part of salvation. So out in TV land, don't freak out, but don't sit there and tell me because repentance is not in John. Repentance doesn't have any part in salvation. You're stupid. Refrigerator is not in the Bible either, but you have one, I hope, at home for your food. It's just, it's ignorant, man. It's just believe. Why would you believe for the saving of your soul unless you believe there was something wrong with your soul? Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You will not take a Savior unless you believe you're wrong and under conviction about your sin. End of story. So Romans 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 is pretty much how you got saved after you believed that you were the sinner God said you were. And yet he throws Isaiah 28 in there. He pulls that in from into Romans. You're like, that's like the Romans road, man. And he put an Isaiah big old stumbling stone right in the middle of it. Because God can do that now. Those Old Testament verses get pulled forward, and the Holy Ghost doesn't miss a beat in writing it down. That's why people come to your Bible and go, see, it's always the same. There's no difference. There's no, I mean, it's always by grace to faith. They all trusted Jesus Christ in the Old Testament because of stuff like this. But you need to take all the verses and context. Why don't you go back to the Old Testament and look them up? And then go forward to where they're quoted in the New Testament. That's why these polls are so huge for you and why we go to all these verses, man. So you, you can see how God rightly divides them without overly dividing them. That's why when you read the Bible, man, you read Leviticus and stuff like that and crazy stuff in 2 Samuel, you can get some spiritual application and food out of it and it doesn't have one doctrinal thing to do with you whatsoever. Love it, man. I, but that, that doesn't mean you're not, no, I'm not going back and put you underneath the Levitical law, but you can't tell me those sacrifices don't mean something to you when you read those and compare them to Jesus Christ and about your life. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. That's the burnt offering, man. That's the meat offering. That's that, but I ain't a priest going, I'm not bringing my stuff to the priest, man. But I can read Leviticus knowing the other parts of the Bible, right? If I can get a really cool blessing and application to me from those passages. That was a lot of oxygen right there. I just took out of the room. All right, go to Deuteronomy, please. Please. Uh, Deuteronomy 30. I know we we're just uh, in Isaiah. Go to, go to Deuteronomy 30. I have the craziest verse written down here, and I have no idea what's going on, so I'll give it to Brother Bird. He can figure it out. <laughs> why did I... Why did I... Oh, I... Go, go to Romans 15. Wow. It is. It's an influence, man. It's like the, it's like the black hole of doom when he's around me. Go to 15. Brother Bird, go ahead. Uh, Romans 15. Why did... Well, wow. Okay. Let's... Whew. Romans 15, 8 to 16, Brother Burke. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess thee to um, confess to thee of the <coughs> Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he said, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and love him, all you people. And again, he says, uh, said, there shall be a root of Jesse, mm -hmm. and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, mm -hmm. because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that Amen. the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Did you see all those verses he pulled in there in 10, uh, 9, 10, and 11, and 12 from the Old Testament? Jonathan, you're going to get a good chance to read, buddy. Deuteronomy 30. I took, your, I took your, your suggestion in the suggestion box that we don't have, and you're getting more reading, man. Deuteronomy 30, if you could. Deuteronomy 30, please. 
11 through 14. I just want to give this because look at, look at what you just read in Romans 3, 10, and 15 regarding Gentiles. And know their place when the Lord's walking the earth with His 12 apostles. And then see how things change in the book of Acts the last week or so. And then watch how God now in Romans with the dispensation of the grace of God and the, and the mystery given that now the Apostle Paul says, yeah, I'm a Benjamite, but I'm, I'm told to go to the Gentiles. And look how God pulls all that Old Testament stuff forward and says, you know what? We can apply them to the church age, the Gentiles. And they'll still happen in the millennial kingdom. Look what the Bible says in 11 through 14. Brother Jonathan, go ahead. But this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up, go up for us to heaven, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it, and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it, and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee, is that not Romans 10? Who shall bring Christ down from above? Who shall bring Christ up from the earth? Where's the word? It's not anything. God's pulling Deuteronomy into Romans 10? Yeah, he can because of the mystery. Oh, well, they all get saved the same way. No, man. Come on, man. It's still Jew, Gentile, Church of God. But you've got to understand this mystery, how huge it is, is to open it. These mysteries... All are explained by God, and they all open up your Bible as a student of the Word of God so you don't get tricked or fooled. Go with me over to, uh, let's see, who, oh, James, I'm sorry, I blew right by you, man. That's not cool. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32 while you're right here. James, can you get uh, Deuteronomy 32, 40 through 43? Mm-hmm. Verse 43 is the pull from Romans chapter number 10, verse 11. Rejoice ye Gentiles. Gentiles are nations, they're plural. Rejoice with his people. Go over with me to uh, 2 Samuel, please. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter number 22. Jen, 2 Samuel 22, oh, 47 to 51. Check this out. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, I will sing praises unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his name, and showeth mercy to the anointed, unto David, and to his seed forevermore. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen. That's the verse over in Romans 10 regarding the Gentiles praising him. How can God do this, man? How can God pull verses? that are dedicated to the Jews, particularly in the millennial kingdom, and pull them forward and have them fit in New Testament Pauline doctrine. What a mystery this thing is. It'll help. It's, it's a little dry tonight because there's a lot of Bible. I understand that. But you've got to think about this. You know, what, you know what we're involved in now is you and I are not to look at people by their skin color, nationality, their rank, their position, social, anything. You know who you and I are to give the gospel to today? whosoever. If God opens the door to you to talk to a black person and you're white, talk to them. Well, you know, no. That's, you're, you're, not, you're not a Jewish apostle walking the earth where you're supposed to stay away from Samaritans and Gentiles. You open your mouth to whoever God opens the door for you to speak to. 
Well, I'm not talking to that class of people. Uh, you, you say this, this is, a, I'm telling you, man, down south, there's some Baptist churches, man, that don't let colored folks in their doors. Good Baptist churches. Stupid, man. You're not underneath that from the Word of God today. But I'm also not stupid enough to think that culturally Hispanic folks aren't different than whites and whites aren't different than blacks. There are, there's, there's differences culturally. But in Christ, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. The gospel is to whosoever will today. And God's proven that to you and I by pulling verses that have nothing to do with Gentiles and heathen nation, the heathen nations and saying, yeah, you know what? Those fit in Romans 10 and 15. Go talk to whoever I tell you to talk to. Man, Psalm 18. Jenny did such a good job, I'm going to give you an extra one, okay? That is not acceptable. Psalm 18. Give you the companion to this in Psalm 18. As you know, 2 Samuel 22 and Psalm 18 are very, very similar. Jen, if you can get 46 to 50, please, of Psalm 18. Amen. There you go. Amen. Psalm 117. Brother Jonathan's favorite psalm. It's the shortest one. Psalm 117. Haley, I need you to get Psalm 117. You can read both verses if it's not too much. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye angels. Praise him, all ye people. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Uh, really? Yeah, all of them. These verses have to do with the subject of your King James Bible. The subject of your Bible is not Jesus Christ dying on a cross and rising again the third day. That's what I like, because it rescued me from hell. But the reality is, your Bible is about a soon-coming king, with a king and a kingdom, and the authority of his word behind it, the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. And the Gentiles are secondary to all of Israel being the one that runs the show. But God can... God can cross all of that based on the way man makes a decision and he can make those verses fit. I mean this I don't I, I like it man I, that's why I have so many cross references man my Cambridge doesn't have a lot in the middle which I'm glad it doesn't it definitely doesn't have a lot of notes you know it does call Leviathan a whirlpool of the one note they have in there that's the one they have come on guys what's wrong with you anyway but they don't have a lot, of, so I just go down right. So if I saw that in Romans 15, I would go back, look it up in concordance, and go back and say, oh, Romans 15, that's Isaiah. Oh, that's Deuteronomy. And that's how you build a cross reference. But I know those promises to the Jew are going to happen again one day. He didn't forget about them. He didn't forget about the Jews. And we're not, we are not replacing them as a church. Isaiah 11, and we're done. Please, Karen. Oh, you're, you're done? Is that what you did? How do you know I want to give it to you? You still haven't found you have you you haven't you haven't found rottenness to the bones yet, there, buddy. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, the Verizon store got it. T-Mobile got T-Mobile got it for you. She pulled out the cricket or the jitterbug, and that's it. No, that's right. No sponsors on this. That YouTube will ban us, man. Isaiah 11, if you could, please. Justin, can you do it for me? My wife's infirmed right now. Figure it out. No. Ten, ten. Read the whole thing. Uh, read the whole thing, Jonathan. No. <laughs> ten, 10 and 11. Look at this with the, root of, with the root of Jesse that was pulled over in Romans 15. And in that day 15. there shall be a root of Jesse. There you go. Which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the Isles of the Sea. How does he get 
Romans 15, 12 into 11, 10, root of Jesse. When every bit of that's pulling back the Jews from the dispersed amongst the nations and exalting them at the second coming. Chapter 11 is what he's going to do to this earth when he comes back. And you put that in Romans 15 for the apostle of the Gentiles so they can be saved and put in the body of Christ? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Well, did you negate that promise, Lord? No, that's going to happen too. Last one, and I do mean this last one. I actually meant this is the last one. Go to Ephesians chapter number 3. I'm going to read this, then we're going to pray, and we are out. A record for a Wednesday night nowadays, huh, Kenny? Hmm. Don't give me that, Kenny. Don't give me that, man. The Bible says this in verse number 1 of Ephesians 3. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles... So when he says, for this cause, I, Paul, he's referring to this in chapter number 2. Let me read it quickly and we'll, we'll pray. Go back to chapter 2. So when he says, for this cause, what's the cause? Hold on for a minute. When you see therefore, right, what should you ask yourself? What's, what's it there for? Typically when God leads you, with a sentence, the first verse of a chapter, and he starts out with, for this cause, or uh, uh, how about uh, 2 Corinthians 4 says, uh, therefore seeing we have this ministry. What ministry? 2 Corinthians 3. So when he says in chapter 3 where we get our mystery from, we've been studying, for this cause I, Paul, look at this, and then, and then we'll close. Look at chapter number 2, verse number 11. 2.11 says this, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's what a Gentile without Christ 100% is. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, Gentiles, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. Who hath, both, uh, who hath made both one, hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. What, who's the us, folks? Go ahead, Jonathan. Say, speak up, man. He, he's made both what? One. What's the mystery we're studying? So now you understand for this cause, he's not going to say, you can understand now my understanding as Jesus Christ taught me this mystery in chapter 3 with what I just gave you in chapter number 2 that God gave you through me. He's explaining in detail in chapter 2, 11 through 22, exactly what he's going to barrel into in chapter number 3. Look what the Bible says. He goes, For he is our peace who hath made both one, hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Verse 15, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both, Jew and Gentile, unto God in one body, there's chapter 3, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which are afar off, Gentiles, and to them that were nigh, Jews. For through him we both have access, we both have access, by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye, Gentiles, are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, that's down in chapter 3, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, that's the whole body of Christ, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye, when you were Gentiles before, but now in Christ, you're part of the whole deal, also are built together for inhabitation of God through the Spirit. The condensed cliff note versions is because of Jesus Christ and the way this thing is unfolded and what we read in Revelation, Deuteronomy, and Isaiah and all those Old Testament verses, how God pulled them forth through the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ has put a Jew and a Gentile into the same body, made them fellow heirs, and there's no difference in Christ now. You ought to thank God for that, man. Wow. I don't have to pick and choose unless God tells me who not to witness to or who to witness to. Leave a track to anybody, man. I don't have to go to the Jew only. That's a big thing, man. It's huge. That's why God calls it a mystery. But the apostles and prophets, they got, they got some gleaning. You, saw it, you just saw it tonight in the Old Testament, but until, until that comes full circle and that the mystery is that you may understand my knowledge in this mystery. Paul's not being cocky, but man, what an apostle God gave us, man. 
in all these mysteries throughout his epistles. Good stuff, man. Brother Burke, pray for us, and we are out for the evening. Heavenly Father, thank you that you did drop the sin. Lord, thank you that you did make us one body with your people in Christ. Yeah, amen. Amen. And we'll thank the blood of Jesus Christ for punishing us all sin. Lord, what an amazing thing that you would have uh, done that would save anybody, but particularly <laughs> Yeah, and amen. Seat us with you in heavenly places and actually love us and give yourself for us. Christ gave himself for us in his life, fulfilling the law and fulfilling all righteousness, as well as giving himself on the cross. Lord, what a thing. And we thank you for it. Thank you for the opportunity to listen to your word and uh, see how you put it together, Lord. How yeah, amen. How you make that application through us. Thank you for that. Lord, thanks for your word. Thank you. Amen.